There is a green revolution in the Sahara Desert, a hostile takeover of the once barren and dry land. This has been possible by the introduction of farmer-managed natural regeneration, or FMNR, a technique that aims to reverse the worst effects of desertification. Farmer-managed natural regeneration is a low-cost land restoration strategy that increases food and timber output while also enhancing climate resilience among impoverished subsistence farmers. The farmer-managed natural regeneration, which began in Niger in 1983, is a type of coppicing and pollarding that draws on traditional techniques and is attentive to regional differences. Farmers use FMNR systems to conserve and regulate the growth of trees and shrubs that naturally regenerate in their fields from rootstock or seeds spread by animal dung. Farmers can easily and affordably increase the number of trees in their fields by using FMNR. The country responsible for most of today's active application of the FMNR is the Republic of Niger. Niger has been through a lot of agricultural woes, and this looks like its best chance at redemption. Between the 1950s and 1980s, the nearly complete removal of trees and bushes in Niger's agricultural zone had disastrous implications. Droughts, strong winds, high temperatures, barren soils, pests, and illnesses all exacerbated the impact of deforestation on crops and cattle. These issues, when combined with high population increase and poverty, resulted in chronic hunger and occasional acute famine. In 1981, the entire country was suffering from significant environmental degradation. An already difficult landscape was transforming into a desert and people were under extreme stress. Gathering low-quality firewood and building supplies took up an increasing amount of time. Women had to trek for miles to gather little branches and millet stalks, and even cattle and goat excrement was used as fuel. This lowered the amount of fodder available for cattle and the amount of manure that could be used as fertilizer. People would dig up the roots of the few surviving protected trees in the dead of night. Crops were affected by 60 to 70 km per hour gusts and stressed by higher temperatures and reduced humidity without the protection of trees. Crops were also harmed by sandblasting and burying during windstorms. In some cases, farmers had to replant crops up to eight times in one season. Crop damage was severe and natural pest predators had vanished along with the trees. Traditional reforestation methods, such as cultivating tree seedlings in nurseries and putting them out, have failed. The adoption of farmer-managed natural regeneration was sluggish at first. A few people attempted it, but were mocked. The FMNR-protected trees were frequently chopped down and stolen. Following extensive radio coverage of deforestation in the Marathi region of the country in 1984, a shift in thinking occurred. This was followed by a severe drought and famine across the country, reinforcing the link in people's thoughts. Communities were compelled to practice FMNR on their farmland during the famine, and as part of a food-for-work scheme, people in an entire district were leaving trees on their farms for the first time. A total of 500,000 trees were saved. Many individuals were surprised to discover that their crops thrived under the shade of the trees. Having excess wood for domestic use and sale helped everyone. Unfortunately, nearly two-thirds of the trees were cut down when the Food for Work program ended. However, a 12-month district-wide exposure to the benefits of FMNR was adequate to introduce the concept and alleviate concerns about growing trees alongside crops. Farmers gradually began to conserve trees once more, and FMNR became a regular practice. This new strategy spread largely from farmer to farmer over 20 years, and today 5 million hectares of farmland have been revegetated. This remarkable success occurred in one of the world's poorest countries, with no government or non-governmental investment in the forestry sector. The FMNR grew from a project to a movement in a matter of months. Before the farmer managed natural regeneration, farmers thought a good farmer was one who cut down all farm trees and swept up and burned any agricultural leftover or organic debris on the property. 
Farmers have no motive to safeguard government-owned trees from robbers because they were owned by the government. Tree theft was prevalent, and many farmers preferred to cut down the trees on their own land in order to at least benefit from the wood. Today, Niger's farmer-managed natural regeneration has increased cereal production by 500,000 tons per year since the 1970s and 1980s. As a result, 2.5 million people will have improved food security. In the Marathi region of Niger, gross income has increased by 17 to $21 million, or about $1,000 per household per year. Extrapolated nationally, $900 million in annual income benefits flow to 900,000 households, or 4.5 million people. Cows are more likely to survive dry seasons with FMNR, which allows for productive, rather than crisis management, triples carrying capacity, and reduces women's work strain. Farms with well-managed full FMNR double staple crop output and profitability. In favorable rainfall years, the FMNR practicing farmers were just moderately better off than their non-practicing neighbors, but in drought years, they were up to five-fold better off. A study conducted in Senegal in 2010 indicated a considerable improvement in grain yields using FMNR compared to traditional land management approaches, 767 kg per hectare versus 296 kg per hectare, according to a World Vision Donna assessment from 2013. After discounting factors, investment of cash, staff, and technical input created a social return on investment ratio of 6 to 1 in the target communities by year 3. According to the analysis, the project will yield a ratio of 17 to 1, 4 years after completion and 43 to 1, 10 years after completion. In Niger and other countries where it has been implemented, FMNR has significantly reduced the fuel wood energy crisis. Farmland in Niger's Agi district, which was nearly treeless in the early 1980s, now has 103 to 122 trees per hectare and responsibly obtained fuel wood is sold locally and across the border to Nigeria. Across millions of hectares of land, indigenous trees and shrubs have been regenerated, providing habitat and food for birds, animals, reptiles, and amphibians, boosting ecosystem function and biodiversity. Farmers in the FMNR have more access to wild foods and traditional treatments. New business options, such as beekeeping, Emerge. Farmer-managed natural regeneration empowers women by allowing them to have a larger role in communal decision-making, elevating their social status and influence, reducing the time required to collect fuel wood, and increasing their income-generating prospects. Communities may be able to work with governments to secure stable tenure and access to natural resources. Restoration of hope, which builds confidence and willingness to invest in improve land, and sustainably manage natural resources, increased awareness, appreciation, and sustainable management of natural resources, recharged water tables and restoration of water sources, and reduced conflict and poverty-driven migration are all unanticipated effects. Free-range grazing, bushfires, constant woody biomass clearance, including theft and border-to-border -border agriculture are all constraints to farmers' managed natural regeneration. These are concerns with destructive human behavior caused by incorrect beliefs and unfavorable attitudes, enabling variables to include legislation that allows for tree ownership and or user rights, locally developed bylaws and enforcement, membership in FMNR practitioner groups, and legal market access to sell tree products. Building trust relationships, close, and regular follow-up visits, short, mid, and long-term major benefits, and higher income and social standing are all associated with successfully overcoming restrictions. There are five essential conditions for resource-poor households to spontaneously adopt agroforestry enterprises, easy access to markets for forestry products, higher benefits from agroforestry than alternatives, a viable forestry production technology, is available and known to farmers, farmer access to sufficient areas of land and security of tenure over that land, and farmer confidence 
in being able to control risks such as fire, pests, and theft. These enabling conditions are created by well-designed FMNR initiatives. Through environmental restoration and sustainable land and vegetation management, FMNR has the potential to reduce vulnerability and raise the resilience of households in the drylands of sub-Saharan Africa and beyond. The FMNR helps smallholder farmers improve their livelihoods while also helping climate change mitigation and adaptation. What would be possible if all stakeholders, including non-governmental organizations, research, education institutions, traditional leaders, donors, and communities, partnered and were serious about land restoration? Niger, one of the world's poorest countries, with extremely harsh climatic conditions and no government and little NGO support, restored 200 million trees in 20 years largely through a farmer-to-farmer -farmer movement. Technically, nothing less than unparalleled worldwide regreening is possible. Indeed, the FMNR's experience in Niger suggests that this strategy could be critical to the AFR 100 or the African Forest Landscape Restoration Initiative and the Bon Challenge's success. The farmer-managed natural regeneration is groundbreaking because it empowers farmers, does not rely on external resources or expertise, is easy low cost, and quick, and is available to even the poorest farmers. It is a no-regrets technology in the sense that it has no significant drawbacks. Therefore, risks are minor, and it's driven by farmers. As a result, FMNR is linked to people's hopes, feelings of self-worth, and dignity. What happened in Niger was neither a technological breakthrough nor a result of massive financial infusions. It was the people's turning point. We will be successful in restoring the large area of degraded agricultural and forest land around the world if we learn to walk alongside individuals whose livelihoods rely on these places and learn jointly how to repair and manage them, all while restoring people's pride and self-worth. The FMNR has proven to be an effective tool for long-term land management when compared to tree planting, FMNR has proven to be more efficient and less expensive. Indeed, traditional regeneration methods in Niger face insurmountable challenges and are both costly and labor-consuming. Drought, sandblasting, pests, weed competition, and animal devastation all nullified efforts after tree seeds were planted. Because FMNR relies on well-developed root systems, trees regenerated by FMNR have a 90 to 100% survival rate. Furthermore, the developed root system assists trees in growing faster than tree seeds. This trait is particularly essential in arid regions like the Sahel, where tree development is sluggish. Traditional agroforestry has attempted to define the ideal tree crop combination and placement to maximize complementarity. No research program, no matter how highly funded, could have come up with the notion because it effectively integrates the nuances of location-specific tree selection with farmer-specific opportunities and limits. It's also been dubbed the most significant positive environmental transformation in the Sahel, if not all of Africa. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe button so that we can make our relationship a permanent one by making you an official tourister here on The New Tourist, the home of spirited content on African development and entrepreneurship. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.